Welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. In this instructional video, we work a compressible adiabatic flow example. This type of flow is also referred to as fanal flow. We will be treating air as an ideal gas as it flows through an insulated duct and look to determine the velocity at the downstream end and the change in entropy through the flow field. I hope you find it useful. Okay, again, we have air flowing through this insulated duct and air properties are provided we are going to be treating the air as an ideal gas uh, we have inlet conditions which we're labeling alpha we have the pressure the temperature and the velocity at bravo the outlet we know the pressure the temperature and one of the things that we're going to be looking for is the uh, velocity at bravo so let's do a quick review of compressible flow uh, type of topics that are typically covered in an undergraduate fluid mechanics course. There can be more, but these are typically covered. Uh, most of the time it's steady state. And one area will be constant area. And under that you'll probably be covering isentropic flow. That will be adiabatic and frictionless. And also what this example involves is adiabatic flow. Also, you may get into varying areas and nozzles and diffusers. And typically you're limited to uh, isentropic flow. Uh, when you cover those uh, those areas. Again, in this example, we are going to be limiting ourselves to steady state adiabatic flow. Okay, let's start with the steady flow energy equation. Energy equation tells us that the conditions at A, the enthalpy plus the kinetic energy term plus the potential energy term plus any uh, heat addition between alpha and bravo is equal to the energy at bravo, which is the enthalpy, the kinetic energy, potential energy, uh, and plus any work out of the system between alpha and bravo. Now just a reminder the enthalpy is equal to the internal energy plus the flow work term which is pressure over the density. For compressible flows well usually vapor or uh, gases and the, uh, connect, the uh, potential energy term is pretty negligible and so we'll be making that simplification and making those terms zero. Uh, in this system there is no compressor or turbine and so the workout term is also zero and again it's insulated and so we will have no uh, heat in or heat out okay with that the equation simplifies to the enthalpy plus the kinetic energy term uh, and that is equal to a constant it's very convenient when we get the compressible flows to define that constant as the stagnation enthalpy and what is the stagnation enthalpy? That is the maximum enthalpy the fluid would obtain if brought to rest adiabatically. Okay, we won't be using that too much in this, but uh, uh, what I would like to do is uh, go ahead and compare our incompressible or the compressible flow equation with the incompressible energy equation. So what we just came up with for fanal flow is the enthalpy plus the kinetic energy term is is equal to a constant, and I can uh, substitute in the definition of the enthalpy and uh, obtain this equation where we have the internal energy plus the flow work term plus the kinetic energy term. And now let's look at an incompressible flow equation. Again, let's just, for apples to apples comparison, uh, say there are no uh, elevation changes. And uh, we get this equation. If there was no friction, the head loss term would be zero. So this would be Bernoulli's equation. Uh, if it is flow with friction, then we will have this uh, uh, this head loss term. So these terms look pretty similar. Uh, in fact, they are because the head loss really, what is that? That term is the change in mechanical energy to thermal energy or heat loss to the surroundings. And if it is adiabatic, uh, like in our situation, then it comes down to the same equation. So this looks like a great equation because it says that even with friction, my uh, energy is constant. And, and in fact, that is true. If we're not losing any uh, energy due to heat loss, then yeah, the energy stays the same. However, uh, the second part of this example, we will be calculating the increase in entropy. And it will be positive, indicating that all the energy remains the same. Its usefulness has decreased because the entropy will increase. So it's an important thing to keep in mind. All right, well, let's get back to our example. So we're left, conservation of energy uh, gives us this expression, the enthalpy plus the kinetic energy term is constant. And uh, now we're gonna get into how do we solve for this? Well, we're gonna assume the air is acting as an ideal gas 
sometimes referred to as a perfect gas or a calorically perfect gas. And what does that mean in this case? Is that the enthalpy is a function of the constant pressure specific heat and the absolute temperature as shown here. And when we do that, we can uh, make that substitution for the enthalpy and obtain this equation. So that's good because we can relate that to alpha and bravo when we have a lot of the information available. And we do that, we have a single equation with a single unknown. So that's good. Uh, we're going to walk through that pretty quick. Uh, units and algebra is hard. Uh, so we solve for the velocity of bravo, plug in the uh, values and the units. Uh, typically, when we're working with ideal gases, we want to use absolute, but since we're just subtracting two temperatures, it doesn't really matter here because they would cancel out. Uh, the joule, just a reminder of the units for the joule are here on the sidebar. It all works out where the velocity of Bravo is 334.9 uh, meters per second. All right, so that was the first part of the, uh, the problem. So pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, but let's go ahead and continue. We know that. And let's find the how the entropy changes as we go from alpha to Bravo. So let's find uh, the quantity uh, entropy at Bravo minus the entropy at alpha. So to do that, you can look in your thermodynamics book, probably even in your fluid mechanics textbook, and you can find this equation. And we actually have everything we need, so we can just plug in and get the answer. But plug in and get the answer, that's not very fulfilling. So let's uh, do a very quick review of where this equation came from. Uh, plug and chug is, uh, sometimes we do it, but it's always good to uh, know what we're doing and why we're doing it. This equation really uh, derives from uh, conservation of energy, the first law of thermodynamics, uh, second law of thermodynamics, and the equation for an ideal gas. So conservation of energy, uh, I'm not going to go into this in detail, but energy is conserved. There's an change in energy term, a work term, a work term, and a heat transfer term. And we can relate that to our type of variables, change in enthalpy. Uh, the uh, heat transfer term is T times change in entropy. And the work term is going to be a flow work term. And we'll have this equation. Let's save it. It's the same equation, just rearrange a little bit. Because we're going to want to be uh, integrating and obtain the change in entropy. Now let's go with the ideal gas. Again, the change in enthalpy is equal to the specific heat, constant pressure, times the change in temperature. And we'll also use the ideal gas law, where the pressure is equal to the density times the gas constant times the temperature. And we can arrange that for the density. And we're going to take that quantity, pressure divided by the gas constant times the temperature, and substitute that in to the denominator for the density in the denominator in this boxed equation. And so when we do that, we obtain this expression. And we're almost done. We can integrate that equation from alpha to bravo. And we obtain the uh, original equation that we could have looked up right out of the textbook. But now we've reviewed and we have great confidence in that equation. Uh, starting with that equation, we can plug in the values. Uh, the units will be coming from the uh, specific heat and the gas constant. Uh, we do have to be careful now. The ratio of the temperatures has to be an absolute. Uh, I always... Uh, Put a little bit of a smile on my face uh, when the students will go in and algebraically cancel out the 273s. Uh, it doesn't work that way, uh, so be careful with that. Uh, pressure units doesn't really matter as long as they are the same. In this case, it's kilopascals. And we calculate the change in entropy. It comes out to be 337 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Uh, we're not going to be going into availability and so forth in, the, in, in, in this example, but... Uh, an increase in entropy uh, uh, means an increase in disorder, and we've just made it that much harder for us to extract useful work. And it kind of makes sense. Uh, if we were wanting to drive a uh, heat engine down here at Bravo where the temperature has decreased, so that's not good for uh, efficiency. The pressure is lower. That's not going to be good for if we had some sort of a mechanical device uh, to extract work. So even though the energy has stayed the same, its usefulness has decreased as it's flowed from Alpha to Bravo, and it went down because the, 
the, the usefulness went down, the entropy went up due to friction. All right, well, that's this example. I uh, hope you found it uh, useful. And if so, uh, please like and subscribe, and have a great day.